Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. We're going to look now at uh, the continuation of getting the hosts prepared and then actually using the logical switches and distributed routing in the NSXT environment. And uh, if we do an addendum part, it'll be kind of the packet walks on how things work in the edge node with logical routing in place. So let's start by looking at the um, uh, setup that we began with, which was here, I cleaned up two, four, and sixes. A box to make them a little squarer, but we've got six virtual machines running across the top one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're on three hosts or three transport nodes that are hypervisor based transport nodes ESXi01, ESXi02, and KVM. And then I've got an edge, an ESXi, so an, a VM based edge node over on the far right that has two NVDS attached to him. The NVDSs are connected through their uplinks to the um, underlay that's represented with a fabric switch with two VLANs, a top VLAN and a bottom VLAN. And if I want to get to the Wow Wow West, I'm going to have a connection to a router in the wild wild west and that's how i'll get to the outside world or to the uh, corporate physical world the intranet uh, moving forward now we want to get ourselves prepared with a, uh, a segment that's going to span all the hypervisors and the edge so it's it's all the transport nodes that are are uh, defined by that nvds now, when I do that, I'm actually creating a, a port group like object that exists on the NVDS. Now, if I attach the VMs to that using the vCenter, it's a quite easy, simple process of just going to the VM and adjusting the network. On KVM, I need to go in and find out what this interface is called, and then I can attach it to that logical switch. It's it's a, a, a slightly uh, less automated process, but the NSX manager can let you uh, uh, connect that as long as you know that VIF ID, that virtual interface ID. So now I have a single logical switch, and 1, 3, and 5 can talk to each other. But now if I really wanted to go, you know, crazy, I would I would go ahead and create another logical switch. And that second logical switch, I'm going to draw in a slightly different color, which will again be represented by a similar to a thing like a port group down on the uh, NVDS. So now if I attach then, say, number two, and number four to that logical switch. Two and four could now communicate with each other. They're on the same broadcast domain. Now the 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 next uh, uh, switch that I build might be something that looks a little like this. And once again, little port group type of of thingy on the NVDS. And once again, with KVM, I find the VIF and I can attach it. Now, 6 at this point is actually relatively isolated. He's the only workload that is on that logical switch. So we don't have a, a communication channel for number 6 to communicate. Now, if we put a Layer 3 device... The Layer 3 devices in NSXT are going to be referred to as uh, gateways. Tier 0 gateway, Tier 1 gateway. In my initial example here, I'm going to just say it's a gateway. I'm not going to tell you yet it's a Tier 1 or a Tier 0 gateway. <laughs> my little secret. But this gateway is going to have interfaces that are going to connect to each of the segments. So I'll have a gateway connected to the segments. 
Now, the one thing I neglected to draw was the fact that the gateway exists over here also on the edge and has those interfaces here. That's interesting. What's this IP? Well, that IP is the same as this IP and the same as this IP and the same as this IP. Um, wait, how does that happen? That happens because actually everything that exists in this space is in memory on that transport node. That's what hypervisors do. So all that stuff is only relevant locally in that uh, in that host, in that transport node. So the fact that there's multiple uh, connections with the same IP exists only locally significant within the transport node. Now, the other thing that I'd point out is there is a VDR port that gets created on each one of the NVDS for that transport zone. So I've got a VDR that exists on each of these. Remember this is all in memory space now, right? So if number one wants to communicate with number two, the path will take him to his gateway up through his interface and direct and never leave the transport zone. <laughs> Excuse me, never leave the transport node. Of course, it doesn't leave the transport zone either, but he doesn't leave the he doesn't leave the host. He's in memory the whole time. Okay, now actually, it's going to uh, traverse you know, in, in memory terms, to this guy, to that guy, to this guy, and up to there, right? So, so the actual traversal is taking place within the memory space of that host. He also can take advantage of the TEP. So if one wants to talk to three, uh, he doesn't have to do anything, right? He goes through the TEP. We're going to, in our next lesson, we'll go through all of these paths. Now, this guy is called a distributed router component, a DR component. And I don't care whether that is a tier 0 or a tier 1. That's the DR component. If I created this object in a single tier environment, this would be a tier 0 gateway. And I would also have an SR for that tier zero. Okay, the SR is going to be uh, the uplink structure. The SR will exist on the uh, with a connection to a port group on the VLAN backed and a connection, what they call an intra tier transit connection to the DR. That will allow us to do north-south routing. And so if this is tier zero router, tier zero router, he's got a tier zero SR and a tier zero DR. So now one talking to six goes through the distributed router component only, four talking to three, never leaves the host, Five talking to six, doesn't leave the host, and so forth. So everything takes place in a distributed component. But if any one of those, one through six, needs to reach to the outside world, he will be passing through that service router. We're going to continue this in another short video where we'll walk through the paths that take place, egress and ingress, and then we'll talk about multi-tier. We'll do that in the next video. So come on back if you're interested.